There are two types of transactions in SQL Server 2005. There are implicit and explicit transactions. And I want to show you the difference between those. And we'll start off with explicit transactions. Now to show you this, you'll notice I'm in the Server Management Studio. That was the Object Explorer that slid out of the way there. There, I'm going to open a query. And if you remember, I've got a database out there called, let's look at it. If you'll notice, it's called Sales. And inside the Sales database, there's a table called Parts. I'm going to go out here and write a Transact SQL statement. I'm going to use the Sales database. And then I'm going to select everything from the Parts table. And notice, there's my data from the parts table. Okay. Now, if I want to do an explicit transaction, I'll show you an example of one here and how we can either roll back a transaction or say, wait a minute, cancel this transaction, erase that stuff from the transaction log. Or I can say, yeah, this transaction is good. Let's write this into the database, and it's called committing a transaction. Well, let's say, for example, that I want to update this table. So I want to update the parts table, and I want to set the uh, location column equal to 70 where location is currently equal to notice right down here 45. Now if I execute this update command then it's going to change this 45 to 70, right? Well let's make this part of a transaction and I'll show you how we can use transactions to help us and it'll give you an idea about how to manipulate transactions. This is the way I clue in the transaction log that I am working in a transaction. I'm going to type begin tran and I'll name my transaction ML. Okay. Now if I execute this entire statement begin tran ML in my update statement, notice one row was affected. I'm going to go back and select from parts again and you'll notice that the location has changed to 70. Now Really, I just wrote the first line of a transaction in there. Well, what if I don't like this? What if something's happened and I don't want this transaction to happen? I can say row back tran ml, execute that, then go back and select from parts again, and you'll notice my location is back to 45. Okay? Now, what if, on the other hand, let's do it again. Let's do the update. Let's look in parts. And let's see that we're back to 70. Okay, it was 45, and we set it to 70. And this time we say, you know what? We like that. Everything is cool. That's a good transaction. We want that to go into the database. So I say commit tran ml. I execute that. Select from parts. Notice it's 70, just like we set it to, okay? Now, if I try to roll back the transaction now, the transaction log can see that it says, wait a minute, there's no corresponding begin transaction. There was a begin, but you committed it, so you'll have to start a new one now. So that's how we can use transactions to roll things back in the transaction log. Now, that is an explicit transaction. I told it to start a transaction and I told it to end a transaction. Now let me show you what an implicit transaction is. An implicit transaction is where, let me go back out, look in parts again, our location is 70. Let's set it to 85 now, wherever it is 70. And notice I have just an update statement. Okay, if I execute this and go back and look at it, it changed my location from 70 to 85. Now, what kind of transaction was that? That was an implicit transaction because what it actually did was it put a transaction, it didn't put ML, but it created a transaction for me. It actually did this for me. It wrote begin tran, it executed a begin tran, then it executed my update statement, then it executed a commit tran. Now, this is something Microsoft did to save you some typing. In other databases, certain versions of Oracle, for example, you don't have these implicit transactions, and you actually have to code them up the way you want them all the time. So, And Microsoft does have a switch. There's a set implicit transactions switch 
on a database that you can set that will determine whether you have to key these or not. But for the most part, leave it alone. Your insert, your update, and your delete statements all do implicit transactions. You don't even have to mention transactions. It automatically commits them. But if you want the ability to roll these things back if an error occurs, you'll have to begin and either roll back or commit your transactions manually in your code.